Great. It looks like we're live and uh, recording. Um, excellent. That's already a good start. Um, so good, good, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, uh, wherever people uh, are at this moment. I think we are very much spread out across uh, the world, um, at least from the previous sessions. Uh, so welcome to this session, uh, Empowering Female Tech uh, uh, Entrepreneurs. Um, I think our session is uh, in a series of a number of other sessions uh, that, that were um, already live during the event. Um, I attended some of those and it was very interesting also to see um, the angles and the topics that were addressed there. We have an excellent uh, uh, panelist today, um, which we already had uh, a great uh, pre-session on and managed to discuss a number of topics uh, before, which was already a treat. Um, so very quick uh, round of uh, introduction. And then I will mention um, a couple housekeeping things uh, uh, to you, and then the floor is going to be to the, uh, for the speakers. Uh, so we have today uh, Dao Janssen, um, Chief Executive Officer and Founder of Kaizen Technology Partners, uh, based in, uh, in the USA. Um, Dao mentioned a number of the initiatives that she's uh, um, actively uh, supporting, pursuing, and facilitating. I will let her speak about those uh, herself a little bit later. Uh, welcome, Dao. Um, we have um, we have Wade Channel, um, Senior Economic Growth Advisor for Gender at USA Eight, um, and Wade. Uh, if he did move uh, from a couple of days ago, he's uh, based in Washington. <laughs> Um, hello, Wade. Uh, good to have you all on board. And we have um, um, uh, Ravi uh, Gundapali. I hope I got it <laughs> this time. <laughs> Thanks, Ravi, uh, who's Chief Executive Officer and Founder of Mentor Cloud, also based um, in the um, US, but with the global um, reach. Um, um, I will also save uh, some introduction of, uh, of the initiative uh, to you. Um, so welcome, welcome to the session. Um, great to have you on board. As you could see, the two questions posed uh, to the panel are related to empowerment of uh, female tech entrepreneurs. Um, and the questions are as to how they could be empowered um, and how they could be supported to become um, as, as entrepreneurs. And as I mentioned in our brief pre-session uh, a couple of days ago, we, we came up with many topics, many angles, uh, which are not solved, many barriers, but then decided to focus on sort of a triangle and triangle of uh, nurture, nature, and access to finance, um, both access and uh, um, and funding. Uh, we see a lot of changes taking place around the, uh, the the world already on this topic. Progress is visible. It is also audible. It is visible because we can see representation in in, in many events. Uh, uh, we see representation in many organizations. Um, it is audible because we hear women. We hear. Um, uh, female entrepreneurs um, are voicing their opinions um, as well as uh, um, uh, leading a number of the initiatives. And we see this growing um, both in politics, um, on the boards of the companies, uh, um, on the agenda and radars of uh, a number of the institutions. But some barriers are still there, and uh, those barriers um, and also the ways how to solve them, because you know we have enough uh, uh, issues in the world right now uh, related to COVID, related to the uh, um, economic uh, issues. Uh, so let's 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 look at it as the opportunity in the right way or in the, in in the progress. Um, uh, versus uh, just focusing on, on the barriers. So I would like to ask the panelists to uh, share with us in the first round of uh, the introductions, um, the initiatives, some of the initiatives that they are working on and some of the potentially success uh, stories um, coming out of those uh, initiatives across uh, the world. 
Um, so if we can ask, um, start with uh, Dao. And just very quick uh, suggestion, in, in the comments, you can pose the questions and we can also share some links with you of some of the initiatives that uh, uh, we would like to discuss. Dao? Thanks, Natalie. Okay. Uh, my name is Dao Jensen. I'm the CEO and founder of Kaizen Technology Partners. We're a born in the cloud system integrator and the first female minority owned cloud company in the West Coast when we started eight years as of yesterday. Um, I'm on the board of directors for the Institute for the Empowerment of Economic uh, Women, and which means we are trying to help other women in other countries be able to, especially in disruptive times, keep and grow their companies to a level that will sustain their families and their uh, people around them. So it got started over 13 years ago when the Taliban um, had decimated a lot of the businesses in Afghanistan. And our founder, uh, Terry, was a niece, was able to, through the president, start an organization for Afghanistan to train them remotely and then also <clears throat> bring them to the United States for the top attendees, mentor them with U.S. Uh, companies, and then bring them to the at t to get some more education and graduate them, as well as get them introduced in their businesses to global other organizations. We've expanded that to Rwanda. And now with COVID, although it takes more money and political involvement to help us expand, we believe that we can virtually expand outside of just Africa and uh, the Afghanistan area and really jump to other countries that might need it. But we would just need help um, with some political and some seed money to help each of these countries where we think might be of most need, need today. Um, I'm also recently joined YPO, which is a young president's organization, and like I'd like to announce today, <laughs> go YPO. Um, the past forty past age for women to get involved or and men to get involved in YPO to be eligible was forty five. As of today, the newer rent regions has announced approval to accept women CEOs, chairman of the boards, and presidents the age of fifty five as they see that women do tend to start their companies much later in their careers because of child rearing or other, uh, you know, family personal uh, obligations. And so we are now starting and could use all of your help to nominate other women who might have passed that 45 age range, but are in before 55 to allow us to bring more women into and diversity into our organization. Thank you. Thanks, Dal, for sharing the both sides. Actually, the, uh, the the some of the successes and also some of uh, the barriers. So you mentioned the um, the barrier of um, age um, in, in in this, and uh, I'm sure we'll pick up on some of those uh, topics. Uh, thank you so much. Um, can we continue uh, with the uh, presentation? Um, Wade, could you share with us some of the initiatives your organization is uh, is focusing on um, and as well as some of the studies that uh, have been done in the area. Yes, uh, great to be here. I, and it's always, for me, it's always a uh, privilege to be here with the private sector because I do work in the government and we have a very different approach, generally a very different mentality. We, we increasingly seek to work with the private sector on common concerns and common solutions. Um, but because I come from a different perspective, mine will be a bit different. A lot of our work really aims at what are the institutional obstacles for women moving into entrepreneurship. And certainly we do a lot on access to finance, but generally access to credit, which is not necessarily the starting point for entrepreneurs. No banks can legally lend to them very much because of the high risks at affordable rates. So. Um, you know, working more. We, we do a good bit of work with GenderLens Investing. We're seeking now to, um, to move. There are many women-oriented funds out there that invest in women or loan to women, and that's fantastic. We're starting to work with non-women-oriented funds to pick this up and to recognize that this is important. And why? Because the, the information coming out of Wall Street, not coming out of government agencies, out of Wall Street is that those companies with a better gender balance overall, with women as among the founders, with women as board members, as managers, as well as in the staff, the you know the the worker level, outperform those without those with the best balances substantially, substantially outperform the boys clubs, and part of our work is to 
point out that if you want return on investment, return on assets, creativity, resilience, uh, greater you know invent, invention, customer service, etc., it is helpful to represent the the, the other fifty percent of the population in your work. Um, and so that that's coming through very well in many places. But frankly, we're a follower here. We're trying to amplify what uh, you know what State Street is saying, is saying what Goldman Sachs is saying. And there's a lot coming out, not just for U.S. companies, but around the world in developing nations and middle-income countries as well. So that's been quite important. And it leads us to try, from our perspective, I think a lot of what we're doing um, is to try to change the pipeline. And I'll, I'll mention a little more later, but, but one of the things that's interesting, Val mentioned Afghanistan and some of the work going on there. A few years back, we discovered something. I don't know that it was a study. But as women in Afghanistan began started going to the university, once it was clear what the earning potential was for different di- disciplines, women chose high earning careers. They didn't go to traditional. When women don't know what the earning differences are, they may be influenced just by tradition and, and, and gender roles. But the fact is they're going into engineering, they're going into technology, they're going into mathematics, they're going into into all of the fields that men go into, in some countries more than others. But getting the information on what this means for women is very important to let them make informed decisions because if we want the pipeline out there, we have to have more women in there. As long as we have very few women in a field, we're going to have very few uh, people investing in those because uh, just the basic numbers. Um, So we work to increase the the pipeline overall. And I'll get back to that later, but uh, with that, hand it back. Um, thank you so much, uh, Wade. So you've uh, um, you've you've already um, hinted and pointed to the fact that sort of the question of nature is uh, solved, right? So you have the studies that where the representation is. Uh, um, is, is the positive factor and contributing factor to the positive outcomes. Uh, um, so you mentioned the STEM uh, program's importance, which is still relevant on this pipeline, and uh, uh, where the uh, entrepreneurs are nurtured uh, initially. Um, so thanks uh, for sharing this, uh, this fact with us. Um, so if I can, um, I will get back to you with this additional question. But now if we can, uh, Ravi, can you please uh, share with us uh, uh, some initiatives that uh, that you're working on? Absolutely. So very nice to meet meet, meet everybody. You know, I, I've, I've been with uh, Horace's conferences and there's so much more fun in person. But this is also fun to meet so many people from around the world. And I think uh, this is a very important topic. Um, and so our work is mainly on mentorship, which is really the, one of the central themes of this particular panel. Uh, because mentorship, in, in my in my mind, is what I call intellectual capital. I even wrote a whole chapter on mentor capital for one of the angel groups for the United Nations. Because intellectual capital is equally, equally, if not more important than financial capital. Because if you give somebody money without any advice, they can actually blow it up uh, on, on wrong aspects, right? So... I always encourage encourage women and men, everybody, get intellectual capital first before you get investment capital so that you know how to leverage those dollars wisely. And as a man, I was one of the 20 men in a sea of 1,000 women speaking about women empowerment. It seemed uh, pretty strange, but I was so glad they invited to the group um, because I come, I, I studied uh, this gender intelligence of, of Barbara Anis. So she has written five books in that in the topic. I can I can talk more about it. You know, basically women and men are not equal. There are the significant advantages that women bring to the table. And, uh, you know, just from a, from a science perspective, you know, Barbara showed me, you know, brain images, uh, MRI scans of women brain versus man men brain, and women have a bigger the prefrontal cortex, so they can think much more contextually. They can take in more emotions, so they are actually very very smart risk takers, not like men who just jump in and say, "Oh, where's my life raft?" Right. <laughs> so there are some inherent advantages, and um, so. 
the the number one thing we can do to empower female tech entrepreneurs is to make sure every entrepreneur that day they become an entrepreneur that day they decide to take on this very very tough journey it's easy to you know take up a job nowadays than be an entrepreneur so they have done that our job as society is to connect them with a mentor make sure that every day they're getting the advice on how to create the pitch deck the story their brand product everything so that's that, that's what we do around the world on mentorship and I'll talk more later Great, thank you so much, uh, Ravi. You mentioned or uh, touched upon uh, uh, already two areas uh, with the impact to the third on 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 finance. Again, we're coming back to the nature and uh, nurture uh, importance of the mentorship networks, uh, and uh, so supposedly it will trickle down into the greater uh, possibilities for uh, finance. Uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing this uh, with us. Um, Now, if if uh, um, if if the challenge is uh, so, the nature is there. Uh, the nurture, we 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 have a, a way. But uh, uh, I would just would like to ask um, uh, the panelists um, if if there is a way um, that women can be better supported through the mentorship programs. Uh, Um, as uh, entrepreneurs, uh, for example, you know, access to funding. Funding um, is is uh, uh, is is not a single vector. So when we're talking about funding, uh, depending on the rounds, depending on the scale, depending on the geographical areas, so it's a different access to different type of funding. Um, so maybe I can ask. Uh, start with um, uh, Dao. Dao, could you share your opinion as to? Um, What, what could be done for the and what type of mentorship for the scaling up of uh, um, access to finance is needed? Yeah, I think as Ravi had said, a lot of it is mentoring and teaching women how to put the proposals together and pitching for the money or to their potential investors. Um, but even starts before then, I think a lot of them don't ask for it because of their confidence within themselves to ask for the help or to ask for the money because I truly believe the money is out there. I don't think there's a lack of money and funding for women entrepreneurs, but what it is is coaching them how to present to the people they're trying to sell to for what's in it for them, what's the style I like to see, and also probably coaching the people who typically invest to be a little more open to different styles of what they expect out of a typical CEO, right? Or a typical person they put risk into, just like I'm trying to do with my team as to who do I typically hire. Right? How do we get creative about that role? So I think there's multiple areas there uh, in terms of the biggest piece is the confidence in the women and the people around them, their network. I think women don't tend to educate them as much and put their money into themselves than men do tend to. They'll put it in their children. They'll put it into other people around them, but they need to be investing in themselves. And so my, uh, me going to Harvard for a CEO program, if I hadn't gotten a scholarship, I wouldn't have. On, you know, wanted to go do it. It was forty-five thousand dollars for three weeks and three years, you know, for three years in a row. And we're challenged to get more than fifteen percent women in that class for one hundred forty-one, you know, students in forty-one countries. But now that I've been through it, money is not an issue for me. Opportunities is not an issue. And so, putting that investment, meeting people, and doing that, you know, training. I think, and I would pay full price now to go do it. But some of us just haven't seen it to get back to us ourselves. Investment. Great, thank you. Um, Wade, would you like to? Yeah, that, thank you. My uh, most of my focus is on the developing world. I'm at the U.S. Agency for International Development, for so you know lower income countries and some middle income countries. One of the things that um, that we have seen in various studies that we and the World Bank and others have done, and they continue to come forward, is the importance when we're when we're working on on entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship trainings are very popular. Uh, many of them don't do much, unfortunately. And one of the reasons is they focus on skills as if skills were the primary issue. How, you know, how much better can you do your books and, and things of that sort? What what studies are showing is that what I call core skills, formerly known as soft skills, and if you would join me in killing that word, I would appreciate it. None <laughs> of these investors here on, on this thing want to buy anything soft, right? It's not soft. These are fundamental foundational skills. And these are skills that as women develop them, uh, they become more self confident And what we find is you train in entrepreneurship, i.e. all these business skills, or just in these 
fundamental core skills, that group outperforms the other group. Over the course of a couple of years, their return, their investment, their growth, their employment, all higher overall. Why? Because when you've been told your entire life in a sexist, misogynist world, and that's where we live, period, you can't do that. Only men can do that. Or you shouldn't do that. You should do this. When you have been told your entire life what you can't do, having for some that part of their training is, okay, let's talk about what we can do and beginning to believe you can do it. It's having a tremendous impact. So it's part of a mentoring that goes even before, as, as Dow was saying, before you get a mentor, um, or Ravi, I think, said this, there are other things in the environment that, that we need to be working on. And, and some of that is in, I, I, seriously, in companies. If you look at where we get successful entrepreneurs overall, the 35 to 45, and I'll go with the 55 that you've mentioned, Dow, Let's, let's take it up there. These are men and women overall who have experience, some money because they've been working and living and, you know, and saving and so on, investing. Um, and they're ready to go and, and, and they're more, much more successful. The pipeline is squeezed for women. We are flushing them out when they have children, when they have to take care of a loved one. We are, the, the, the corporate structure is not producing the same number of women by keeping them, um, not not high, not raising them into this responsibility as much. So we really have a lot of work to do internally in our industries. And if it's the tech industry or the mining industry or whatever it is, as long as we are not recruiting, retaining through decent workplace and promoting through, um, through policies that recognize that men and women may come at things differently and that if you only use one standard, you only get one. You know, one of my mantras these days, if you do not design with women in mind, you are designing for men. So we have to change this. And and that comes from the whole ecosystem. It's it's not just one program. Uh, it is not just one initiative. Um, some of the things that have been mentioned, even, you know, d d d visual design and visual representation um, also should be uh, uh, done with the um, a women perception in, 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 in mind. So from little things like this to the um, more fundamental things of the representation. Um, but it even starts with our parents, right? It in, in sets about how we raise our children. You know, I'm uh, a daughter of six kids and one boy, right? And the Asian cultures very much need more boys because they bring more value. You know, but I'm the only entrepreneur in my family. And now my, my mother passed away her last few days was, look, at, you gave me such a hard time for having all these girls, but look who's taking care of you now, dad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We as parents always need to look and be a role model. That's why I went to Harvard or why I did the CEO program and start my own company eight years ago is because we got to show our own children what we can do and support our friends and families around that women at any age and men. Walmart was started at 50 something. Kentucky Fried Chicken was started at 50 something as a company. Right. But people just always think, oh, it's too late. You know, I'm, I'm too old. I can't get it. It's, you know, no one will buy from me. And it's like your wisdom, your background in commercial and some money has a lot to be said in a new company. You don't have to be 20 something in Silicon Valley to make money. Yes, barriers are there, but it's the question uh, how we empowered to deal with those and what, what is this ecosystem that either brings this uh, uh, to, to a success story or um, creates uh, creates uh, a vacuum, uh, basically. Ravi, I see you nodding, so I think you would like to also to address the, uh, the, 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 the question. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely want to join Wade. Uh, you know, I, I killed the word soft skills once in Canada and I will, let's do once again in, in America. Let's kill it. Um, because I, I said in one of my talks that the word must have come from the industrial revolution. Because hard skills means you're on, you're in the manufacturing uh, floor in trying to you know lift these heavy trucks or something like that. And soft skills is like, what do you do on the side? That's just a bad way to describe it. These are life skills. These are important skills. This is the software that runs all of us is how we communicate, how we how we network, uh, how we present, uh, how we have compassion. All of those are really are more important than anything else. So it's killed one one more time, you know. Um, but um, I, I do want to talk about some of the, you know, what I have found is some of the pitfalls that women that I have found and I have also observed because I come from a family of seven children and I've seen my mom never ask for help because women are incredibly capable. So one of the seven pitfalls 
uh, is that women don't ask for help. Whereas men, if you don't know something, we just ask. No problem. That's that's number one. Second is I I heard women are harder on themselves. Uh, whereas men like okay, it's okay. Just you know, why brush off and move on. Um, and women don't self promote. You got to be promoting yourself. You know, and and I'm learning too. Sometimes I don't as well, but but I'm learning. And the most important thing, which I which I think uh, uh, you know, uh, you mentioned is asking uh, asking VCs for money. You got right. to be bold. Women don't make bold requests. Is one of the seven pitfalls. So money is out there, and you have to be bold. You have to really show confidence that you already have. You just have to show it. You just don't to be feel intimidated about it. And some of the new things that are happening in the economy, you know, Nasdaq's ruling that all three thousand companies should have at least a woman or one of minority on board. Those things are changing. And I, I have been personally seen so many initiatives that are that are looking to fund women, fund women-led companies. And uh, so, you know, everyone that is listening out there, you know, today or the recording later, find a mentor for yourself because. That's the key right now, is because there's so much money out there, so much help out there, but you have to ask for it. Nobody is going to come knocking on your door and say, "Hey, can I help you?" I mean, we launched Mentor Makers with Nasdaq to actually enable that. But but uh, you know, please ask uh, is, is is what my you know uh, advice is. All right, I have to jump in with one thing there, Ravi. I really like what you're saying. <laughs> one item, as you went through that list, you reminded me of a time when I was listening to a colleague talk about cross-border trading and how they were training women to negotiate better. This was in Southern Africa, and uh, because you know they weren't getting the money they should for their goods and and whatever they were were uh, trying to trade. Um, and interestingly, at the time, I was reading books on other sub- subjects, and as this friends went through a list of how, you know, what men were like and various qualities that we're used to and what women were like and various qualities that we're used to. What she read was a list of trauma symptoms. I was reading about trauma. And part of what you just shared hit me again. Some of what we're talking about is why do women, uh, why are they risk aware? Because they live with it every day of their lives in ways that men don't. And until we address the issues of gender-based violence in our cultures, um, we will continue to perpetuate generational trauma. And we are seeing that as, oh, well, that's how women are. No, that's how really smart people are when they want to protect themselves from what they know is out there and they have seen all their lives. And if not directly, I don't think there's a woman in the world that doesn't know someone who has been the victim of some sort of gender-based violence. So um, I just, we have a lot of mindset changing to do, in my mind. We, there's a lot of mindset changing to do, especially with the men equity investors, right? If they think women are risk averse, no, they're not. It's not risk averse. I mean, it's not, it's not being smart when you jump in the water and go swim with a group of, of, of marine life that has fins. If you think they're dolphins and they're sharks, that's not a sign of courage. That's a sign of not knowing. Women swim with the sharks every day of their lives. And it's given them an advantage over men in decision making. And now men need to get a little better at this too. So I'm for changing us both in the direction of let's let's work towards each other's strengths. But in the meantime, let's embody, let's let's uh, engage each other on our strengths and get more women in the workplace where men have been on. Thanks. Um, um, I would like to mention uh, a number of things that uh, we've been working on in, in, in Europe lately, which is uh, um, actually, is, um, I see a little bit of the uh, Natalie, I a little bit of a background. Yes, I'm not sure where it comes from. Yes, thank you. Um, so some, some initiatives that uh, um, uh, we worked on uh, last year, uh, which continue into this year and um, uh, with the European Commission and uh, at the Parliament, um, together with the Knowledge for Innovation uh, Forum. 
Um, and the reason why I'd like to mention them, because uh, the, 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 as, as, as we could see from your comments, um, this, this, uh, the, the balance is not a naturally occurring phenomena. Uh, it means someone is leading those initiatives, someone is either regulating or putting this, uh, uh, the rules in place um, or coming up with, uh, uh, with these initiatives. And, uh, uh, but it's always a uh, public-private side, so it's, it's a bit on the regulation and it's a bit from industry-driven and the ecosystems-driven. And um, so we started with uh, hard facts, statistics and the analysis. Um, and the uh, European Investment Bank uh, said in the, uh, their latest report from June 2020, and I will quote, there is a paramount need to increase the quantum of financing available. So as financing is available there, and we're talking about just one continent here, um, to female entrepreneurs going forward. And European institutions and programs have the means to lead the way by prioritizing investments in this area and crowding in additional financing. And this is to my point that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a public-private uh, um, effort. 2% of funding for women-led entrepreneurs um, are only only uh, being recorded now by um, EIB. So two percent, um, and based on, on 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 this and many more statistical facts, uh, what we agreed to uh, to start is the uh, Women Invest Observatory, uh, together with. Um, uh, financial institutions, uh, bank, commercial banks, um, uh, VCs, and other organizations to actually uh, have some type of the observability and the KPIs and uh, um, ability to see the progress and act upon um, uh, the e e either the progress or remove the uh, the barriers. So this is one of the initiatives that uh, um, we're gonna uh, kickstart uh, this this year based on what's been discovered uh, so far um, and now the uh, um, but there are also some industry uh, driven initiatives uh, and what they are also I think the grounds for nurturing uh, the future entrepreneurs and I, I will mention two of those initiatives one is um, uh, women in hydrogen uh, which uh, uh, was started in November of the last year, and I think there are more than 300 uh, members uh, already uh, in the program. And 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 this initiative is uh, 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 nurture uh, mainly, but you can see that maybe a year or two years uh, from now there will be uh, spin-offs, there will be ventures that will be funded and. Uh, um, uh, started by by women which are part of this uh, network so uh, that's the factor of the togetherness and the other organization I would like to mention is um, uh, women in renewable uh, energies in solar also very large network um, and what I would like to stress um, is the fact that these are not naturally occurring things you know someone is leading someone is uh, uh, putting these networks together, organizing the events. Uh, so the ecosystem effect is, is very important and the public-private um, um, uh, nexus. Um, so this is a little bit of uh, sharing what's, what's happening on the European continent. Uh, we are not there yet, of course, 2% is very low. Um, and also the uh, uh, representation in the financial institutions and in the VCs uh, by women is also quite low. And uh, well, and linked to that, um, I would like to pose the second uh, question that we have uh, uh, for the panel. Uh, what mentoring is needed to win more funding capital? So now we're entering the, uh, the finance side of it. Uh, so if you could share your opinion, please. Um, um, Wade, uh, should we start with you this time? <laughs> uh, you're muted. So you, you're on mute. I was just going to say, I want the other two to go first in the interest okay. of time. I'm a bureaucrat, and, you know, I'm a proud bureaucrat, but I think they've got more to say here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Robbie, you have a question, yeah. so we should start with you then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, um, you know, key again is, like, I mentor a lot of women entrepreneurs now as part of uh, this, you know, NASDAQ's Mental Makers Movement, and... And um, one of the areas that I find myself helping them is to really ask themselves a few questions. Is your idea fundable? 
right? It's not about oh nobody is investing in me. And it, this is true with any entrepreneur because Silicon Valley has spread a very bad disease. I'm in Silicon Valley and I know this 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 disease that you for you to be successful you have to raise money, raise money, and then anyone that raises tens hundreds millions of dollars is in the news. But there are so many amazing companies who who did not raise a single dollar and they're doing great. So this whole notion of raising money as a sign of success is a disease. Okay. We have to do that. Okay, a business runs with customers and a clear revenue model and a sustained plan. It doesn't. It it cannot run with funding. I mean, these TikToks of the world, clubhouses of the world. Th- those things are not good long term long term models. So mm-hmm. I think Davo and uh, we talked about you know millennials versus older people starting companies. I I can say and I could be controversial here, but older people starting companies, those companies will be good for the world. Mm-hmm. Younger people starting companies, they they may be like tech superstars, but are they good for the world? Is something we have to think because these younger people have not experienced the world enough to think what is good. An online gaming company is a great venture, but is bad for the world. As a parent, we know how much it takes kids mm-hmm. away from education, from phones, from texting. You know, TikTok is a great venture supposedly, but it is bad for the world. So I, I totally, uh, you know, I am I'm going out there and telling guys responsible investing. Don't invest in anything that makes money. There are there are many ways to make money. So. All of entrepreneurs listening is think how fundable you are, and don't think your success is only on funding. Find uh, find customers who will invest in your solution. Find, for example, the 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 whole domain of corporate venture capital is is on the rise. Mm-hmm. You know they invested more money than VCs. Corporates, if you are a healthcare company, talk to a healthcare you know behemoth and say you know if they want to do a pilot with you, that's the best way to build businesses. It is first of all non-dilutive, and you can keep more of your, you know, pie, and you don't have to have the stress of fundraising. At some point, you will have to, but you're not, you're not uh, going with the begging bowl. You know, you go with the strength of customers, strength of acceptance of, and your thought leadership. Um, so that that would be focus on those aspects, and money will come. People will call you and say we want to put money in you because they've heard about you. You have customers, you have revenue, you have thought leadership. So it's not only about fundraising, and it's not only about being funded by others. Uh, it's 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 also about uh, gaining the, the 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 market and the trust from the customers. Um, thanks. That that's that's mentoring, Ravi. <laughs> You're already doing it. <laughs> thanks for sharing. Um, thank you. Um, Dao, can can uh, can you share your opinion on the topic with us? Sure. I think a lot of it is letting people know that there are other funds than just VCs, too. There are a yeah. ton of family offices and a ton of angel investors and friends and family and Kickstarters. And I think you really have to look at what's the right way to fund my business. Is it through customers before I go ask for more money? Can I do a mini pilot of customer base before I go ask so I can prove something? I mean, I started with $40,000 and bootstrap my company. Now we're a $31 million company with no, no debt. Right. So, you know, one thing that women don't tend to do also is take debt. And I'm, I'm not proud to say I have no debt. I need to take some. Right. But because you've got to learn leverage. And what I think we're missing for women, too, is the exit discussion. Or even in men or women discussions is there are a lot of people who exit. But how do you teach them what exit means and where are the pitfalls so that they don't lose the value that they created by signing off to other people? Right. And that's like a sacred cow. I feel like a lot of times in terms of mentoring, how many people who've sold their companies and have been acquired will mentor people so that they don't make the same problems and pitfalls to VCs and uh, larger companies buying us. Right. I I think that's one that's just not been touched very well. And when a woman knows that what they're going to get in the long term, they can plan out that plan and that financial succession plan of where do I start debt? Where do I start investors and how do I want to leave it when I'm gone? 
Great. Yeah, that's that's a very very important angle of the value creation beyond uh, beyond financing and uh, the various stages of mentoring at that stage and creating the network of the successful stories uh, towards uh, towards women at, at various stages of uh, their enterprise. Thank you. Thanks, Dal. Um, yeah, if I can make one comment, right? Uh, you know, even if you, even if you have a Tesla, it needs a GPS, right? Yes, <laughs> it needs a driver. So it's not about money; it's not about the car. A Tesla needs a good driver, a good navigation system. So we should we should get away from thinking about you know equipping ourselves with capital is the way because I've seen many entrepreneurs, including myself, you know that sometimes I spend on something that I don't need. Only later I realize I I hire the wrong people, I I make the wrong bets. We do this all the time, so we can avoid all of those. You know, Harvard study showed. 71% of CEOs saying, 86% actually, saying they avoid costly mistakes when they have mentors. So even before we talk, you, you get money, get a mentor, as, I mean, a good one. And, and Dawa, to your point, 71% uh, of women say that they have never been approached for mentorship, but if they, somebody asks them, they will ju they'll jump and do it. So there are women out there in the world, uh, all listeners, please ask them. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I have a need. Even to my daughter, I, I, I always tell her, just have a conversation. Don't have an outcome. It's not like you, you're not going to a store for shopping. Because if, if you choreograph the input, the output is also choreographed. It's very deterministic. So I tell my entrepreneurs, don't choreograph the input. Just go with an open mind. Have a conversation. See what happens. And you see the magic when that word goes to so many people around the world. So have a conversation and see the magic. Don't be afraid to. So soliciting um, help, responding to the help uh, offered, uh, and being part of the uh, networks. Uh, this is exactly the, uh, the the result. There was a solicitation of the mentorship program uh, from uh, one of the networks that I mentioned, and I think the subscription was more than seventy percent of women within the network volunteered uh, to to mentor others. So the interest is there. Our session is uh, is about to end very soon. So um, I think um, uh, we will be wrapping quite soon. And I would like to ask uh, um, people who were participating in in, uh, in in the session if there are any questions. I don't see any on the um, uh, on the chat. So, but this is this is an opportunity to uh, um, to to ask a question. And uh, if we can make one round, like closing remarks, there were great additional ideas that were shared uh, um, today. So if we can do in reverse uh, order, Ravi, would you like to share a couple of thoughts with us? Closing thoughts. Yeah, first of all, it's it's a very important topic, and this is only the you know starting. So you know, find a mentor and be a mentor. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Dow. Sure. Um, I think when we talk about tech, you can't be scared of the word tech. I think we need more women in tech and they need to understand that it's about technology enabling a problem. And you can be a tech entrepreneur that has people around you that can help you enable a problem. But you need to have a specific understanding of sales, supply chain, manufacturing. And tech is just an area to resolve and solve it as a blue ocean. I did not know what yeah, I did not know what Java was. I was not in the tech field. I was in the finance field. And look at here, I've been here for 20 years, right? So it was not what I was intending to. So no, don't be scared about the tech world and use it to your advantage to help you make a difference in your company that you want to start. Thank you. Very inspiring message, uh, uh, Dow. Uh, now it's 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 going to be hard to conclude. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, no, I, I'm not going to try to, to compete here. I'll go back to my systemic uh, kind of approach, which is I think all of us in our jobs, in our corporations, others, we have to continue the process of uh, getting another message out there that women, gender equality in these areas is not an option like a nice, uh, a nice sound system in your car, in your Tesla, and what GPS do you get? Tesla, if you go to buy one, and I haven't, but I bought a Subaru, they don't offer you, oh, well, and we've got a car with an engine, too. You want, you want the engine? No, it's a feature. Women's a equality is a feature. It is not an option. And we have to get that message out and get men particularly, but also women sometimes, 
to realize that there, yeah, there are differences and almost all of them are learned and we can learn something new and that's exciting. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yes, it is a process, so I don't think we can solve um, everything in, 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 in one year, but the progress is definitely uh, here. Uh, the learning curve is definitely uh, here, but it is, I think, within each of uh, our reach and effort uh, to contribute uh, uh, and uh, to, to, to help and being able to be part of the uh, uh, system that is there to support. And um, so uh, let's make it a, a joint effort in the future and looking forward to connect with you on some of the initiatives uh, that we can potentially um, join our efforts on. Thank you. I think we have to close. Um, and um, so uh, good event to everyone and see you uh, in Horace's global communities on other events as well. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Uh, Thank you very much, Natalie, for excellent uh, in moderation and uh, for keeping us all on time thank you very much appreciate it thank you Nat. thank you bye bye, bye, -bye.